whole story and it's all right. After this is all right, that's eh? mobile set. Mobile set. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Is it audible? Yes, sir, it's audible. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yes, sir. It's audible. Uh, very good morning, sir. Is it audible? Yeah, it's audible. Uh, you know, I'm extremely sorry. Oh. There was a delay for about uh, 10 to 15 minutes no, because uh, there is a very poor network yeah. here due to heavy rain. Uh, uh, but still, somehow we have managed to get the connectivity through some other sources. No issue. Okay. So very good morning to all of you once again. Uh, today, we have our wonderful uh, speaker, uh, Dr. Joy Kumar Singh, for giving the brief introduction about our lead speaker today. May I request to Dr. Purnapati? Dr. Purnapati, please. Yes, uh, yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? 
Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is our privilege to welcome our today's lead speaker, Dr. N.G. Joy Kumar Singh. He is an MTech uh, Agriculture Process and Food Engineering and PhD in Process and Food Engineering. Dr. Joy Kumar started his career as teaching faculty in Agricultural Engineering Division, College of Agriculture, Central Agriculture University, in Park, since 2001 till then. He is actively involved in teaching research and extension for the last 19 years. He has many external added research for the uh, project funded by D DSC, DVT, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. He is also heading the ACRIB on Fourth Harvest Engineering and Technology Directorate of Research, CAU in Nepal, as principal investigator. He has more than 25 publications. His broad research areas are design and development of small, medium food processing ma machines, which are eco friendly and druggery free. Value addition of fruits and vegetables. He has also achieved the distinguished award in the field of agricultural engineering, best center performance award of ACRIP PHEP, best paper presentation award in national seminars. Now I would like to request our sir, Dr. N.G. Joy Kumar Singh to kindly extend the knowledge to the participant. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Punavati. You have given a very nice uh, introduction. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yes, sir. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, today, uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, welcome to all the delegates, uh, participants to the week long uh, webinar. First of all, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Central Governance Professor M. Pranjit Singh, the patron of uh, this webinar. And then Professor N. G. N. Hazarika, Dean College of Agriculture, I mean, uh, for forest. Horticulture and Forestry Partiger, and uh, Dr. Horbilas A.S. Malia Power Organizing Secretary, active, very active person's uh, secretary in this webinar. So uh, very good morning to all. So uh, topic, uh, in fact, uh, I'll be sharing with you is the uh, entrepreneurship design to processing value addition fruits and vegetables, especially for a nutrition reason. In fact, uh, we have been hearing for the last, uh, was, uh, I was actively hearing all the you know uh, the, the deliberations of by the different speakers, and we have uh, touched somewhere addressed uh, like uh, what is the importance of the processing and uh, thereby entrepreneurship development, and then it is one way to what we call keep ourselves as sustainable kind of thing. So in that same line, so uh, today my topic is also something like entrepreneurship development to processing food and that. So what the importance of uh, this? Uh, processing and value addition of uh, whatever crops available in the nutrition state. We realize only when the situation like the pandemic, uh, what they call the COVID pandemic, uh, 19 pandemic came. In fact, earlier we were taking the foods, only the prepared foods, and we are not giving much attention to processing of, uh, you know, uh, the, the developing of our processing facilities. Now, in this line, during this COVID-19, we have really seen when everything was closed, how important these micro order mini processing units are. So, so let me just start with a little bit of introduction, actually, what are the problems? Uh, okay, anyway, the challenges, the constraint that we are facing in the Nordicine region, in a general, in fact, as you know, why we are not able to develop ourselves in the processing and do the marketing properly is all because of uh, we have a very big problems in the transportation because transport and bottleneck is one of the big issue. Because what I have seen in the last, I mean, the other side of uh, right side of uh, this uh, slide, no, in the other parts they have a very good transport facilities. We don't have that, so this is one big constraint. And another constraint that we can talk about is we don't have a call, proper cold storage. Whatever produced, the farmers are producing at their field, you know. So it, 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 since when, when there is some kind of a bun, there's some kind of a pandemic lockdown system. So we have no option to just store in the field or keep it in a room and get it broken and see it broken. Because
first. You don't have to suffer from post anything. And then another thing, when such type of system, when the pandemic system comes in, we farmers, the rural people, we have no idea how to process it. So that is also another big issue. Having known, oh, this food is to be produced like this, processed like this, then definitely they would have done something to preserve it and keep it for future use. So like that, in the, and another problem is that whatever produce you have, material, suppose packaging material, chemical, these are all brought from other states. So here also the big issues are coming. So these are the, some of the constraints in general I'm talking about. Another big issue is this marketing agencies. Yesterday I have uh, listened to our MS guidance marketing strategies and all those things. So like so far marketing strategy has to be planned you know, what food, what food thing by the government or by some other agency. Otherwise, whatever food produced uh, cannot really, I mean, cannot reach the market. And just to cite some of the example, how we really face a problem during the COVID system is, you know, like a uh, lot of challenges. Just to cite one example was in Assam, talking about a notice in Assam. You know, uh, there was a heavy loss in a what they call the tea. Because most of the during the lockdown system, you know, all these laborers have gone home and uh, there was no ability the laborer to and then the, the port cluster for this what they call the tea was to be plugged. And they cannot do it because of this, you know, uh, uh, Assam not is the tea association, they have estimated to the loss of one thousand two hundred rows to teas you know, over tea. So there's a big, huge loss, in fact, uh, because of this COVID, the impact of it. Another is, like we have seen even in our state, Manipur also, many farmers, they grew uh, this tomato, tomato, there was no sale, and, and they cannot store also. Even they threw it into the field. They did not harvest. That was the situation. Even the milk, milk, nobody, milk, uh, actually most of the restaurants, hotels, they closed. They could not sell market to the milk. That's why they had to just, in an example, they had to spill it on the road itself. They were the situation. Another, uh, what you call impact, what we have seen. Why I'm talking about this impact, the problems we are facing is Halpi Tamil later on. It is all because we do not have a proper processing uh, facility. So like, you know, in spices production also, spices, maybe ginger, turmeric, cardamom. So these are mostly harvested uh, in the month of say, December, January, February, March. So in fact, you know, when the COVID and the lockdown started somewhere in the uh, month of uh, last week of uh, what you call it, March. No? So the last picking was left over. And uh, mostly what happened, well, all these uh, spices, when they are harvested, they have to go for post-harvest processing. So there was no time the post harvest processing was only the lab because after harvesting that was supposed to be dried that was supposed to be traced grading so many steps were there so that could not be done because of the lockdown system so now you can imagine what would be the quality of the spices that were harvested during, during hello sir hello hello sir ah yeah, sir yeah. your voice is little down sir please check your system volume whether you are lesser or what now, is it audible now? Is yeah, it is audible. Sir. It's audible, sir, but it is a little down. So please check the volume, whether it was still given 100% or not. Yeah, yeah, it is 100%. Okay, I'll just uh, keep very close to, to my mouth. Yeah, yeah, please, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, another problem of the spices. So a lot of uh, when, uh, when the post harvest processing was not actually done for the most of the spices because of a lack of, I mean, uh, these laborers and then and all these, they have gone back home. So these are the impacts we have seen. Okay, now, now some people say in Delhi and others, is we have to leave along with COVID. So in that system, what is our strategies? Our strategies in the coming, because of this, I mean, the pandemic will be there along with us all the time in the coming another, maybe few months. So what is the problem we have in the Northern state? Because we have a very tiny, tiny state. We don't have that much production. Whatever 
more than 50 percent of our production, our uh, what you call food, is dependent on uh, the import from other parts of the country. So, since the lockdown is going on, then the option left with is our strategy should be in the coming four months also we have to go for kharif vegetable production and then proper processing of this one. This will be our first target. So, because what we want is not the, what you call it, uh, very nutritious food, not the very, uh, what they call it, valuable food, mm -hmm. it only just to fill our stomach. So this much amount of the food is required at this point of time. So for that, four times crop, maybe curry, vegetable, maybe other type of crop, and the process is required. Then, after this October, November, then we have to go for when a rabbit season comes, we have to go for a ready vegetable plantation and then processing the other. When everything gets settled down at the end of uh, this year, no? then finally we have to go for uh, uh, something like uh, like very high tech, this one, uh, uh, cultivations or uh, this one. No? Because the, when everything gets settled down, then we have to improve our, uh, what they call the nutritionist food and all those high tech technologies to be used in this. Okay, so this is the strategy how I uh, will be planning. In fact, uh, when I was talking about production, we have to produce more and more. We have more than 45% of a uh, potassium area to be uh, what you call it, grown and processed. Okay, I will not talk much about this. I'll directly come to how we can develop entrepreneurship. As you know, northeastern states, in fact, we have uh, uh, the crops which are unique for the Northeastern state. For example, pineapple. Pineapple is a unique of Northeastern state, particularly the Manipur and Tripura and, and then of course Meghali and all that. Because when we plan for any kind of entrepreneurship development, so we'll have to see which is the, the crop available around us and then what we can do from this crop. It is not that, uh, you know, truly speaking, cereal crops we cannot touch because other mainland area, they have a huge, huge land for the cereal crop. And we cannot compete because we now we have come out uh, to become an entrepreneur. Then only option is what is the unique, what is the strength of the Northeast? So that way we have to plan. So like pineapple is one thing and a mandarin, kasi mandarin and then uh, what you call Tamil Mandarin in the Manipur. This is another and uh, unique and a capsa element of uh, uh, called Manipur. So these all uh, are the unique, uh, having very good you know, what you call quality. Then ginger, turmeric, and spring chili, etc. So we have to target our entrepreneurship development mainly through these crops. Okay, as I was just talking about the pineapple. The quality of the pineapple that we find in the northern states in Manipur is of a very good quality, truly speaking. So here, sometimes the pH is very goes up to 18 degrees, especially in the green variety. And we have a good production. So this is one option where one can become an entrepreneur. I will be talking what are the different uh, what you call processing units, and then how one can pick up. Uh, uh, the entrepreneur in the later slide. Coming to the ginger, ginger again, the quality of the ginger which is available in the northern states is really incomparable. The air has got a very high oleration and then it is less fiber. Like that, we have a very good production also. This is another turmeric is no less. Cocumin container is so high, incomparable with other parts of the country, I mean, available in other parts of the country. Then, uh, as, a while, as I was talking about mandarin or tamangum orange, this is also another potential area where one can come up as an entrepreneur. Okay, because people say it is one of the best mandarin in India. Like chili, chili, you know, uh, king chili, and we have um, tarakung chili also, because this tarakung chili and king chili. Uh, the Northeastern state has definitely GI. So here, these are the areas one can think about becoming an entrepreneur. Otherwise, we cannot compete with the mainland area. 
other promising horticulture crops are again the many are there and then when one plant when we plan for becoming an entrepreneur mm -hmm. i have to you know see what is available around me and then because the only uh, processing of the pineapple or processing of the orange i cannot become a successful entrepreneur i have to select because these crops are all seasonal crops one crop say two three months and then next another three four months another crop like they will have to select uh, two, three crops so that the entrepreneur has to engage himself all throughout the year. Only then he will become a successful entrepreneur. For that, we need to know what are the uh, potential fruits or vegetables available around me and when it is available, the season of production. Because when we want to produce or process our uh, any first up of food production, you know, we have to do it during the glass season when it is available maximum okay otherwise when uh, it is partially or a half available processing during that time is again we cannot earn because the price of this commodity keeps on changing in the early stage very high middle stage very low and then later stage again low so we have to target we have to purchase the raw material during this glass season timing so like that uh, what are the crops available around me when we have to do all this processing season wise. I will have to I mean, uh, plan. Planning is required for that. Okay, after knowing what are the unique crops available in Northern State, let me directly come to what are the different opportunities uh, for becoming an entrepreneur. Say, for example, I said primary ginger processing, it is one of the uh, primary ginger is one of the very good. Uh, uh, what they call it, uh, varieties or uh, uniqueness of the Nordic state. I directly come to one establishment of the small scale of the primary processing. In fact, the idea of showing this particular slide is, you know, you cannot depend on very big factories where the big machinery is there. It involves several crores. And so many years we have been hearing newspaper and governments, uh, you know, that will establish this, will establish, but nothing happened so far. Now, we realize all these things when the pandemic situation, when the COVID pandemic situation arrives. Because we have a, our production at the next level. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when everything's closed, mm -hmm. like big factories, mm -hmm. industries are closed, then in the village level, a very small group of people, maybe around four or five people, they themselves can do the processing in a small amount. Per day. So it is possible with one or two machines, three, four machines in a city. Say, for example, when we go for the ginger turmeric processing plant, no, we can have one watch there, ginger turmeric watch there. So this particular machine, electricity is not required, it's a manually. My plan is establishment of a micro processing plant. So this washing, I mean, all this uh, turmeric or the ginger. The writing can be washed so easily with this machine. Then we go directly for the slicing. If it is uh, boiling, if it is boiling, then we'll go for boiling. Otherwise, many of the people here in Northwest, so we directly go for the slicing. Then drying at a low cost. All these machines will cost hardly 20,000. Hello, sir. 000. Yes. Uh, I think you are uh, changing the desktop uh, slides, sir. Please uh, change the slides in the shared screen, sir. In the Zoom Zoom application only you change the slides, sir. Because it is showing here, please move this window away from the shared application. Yeah. Is it okay now? Yeah, yeah, yes, you yeah. just open, sir. Maximize it, sir. You open the Zoom uh, screen, sir. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You open in the Zoom screen, sir. Uh, return to meeting. And your voice also is too low, sir. Maximum participants, they are saying it is not audible. You check both the uh, volume, sir. System volume. Yeah. Maximize it, sir. Now it's ma not maximized. 
CPT is not maximized. Mag uh, down side, down side, huh? yes. This one? Yes, yes, sir. down. Yes. Sir. I, I click this. No, ah, yes, sir. Yeah, it's maximized, sir. Oh, okay. So, what is the problem now? Yeah, yes, sir. It's a bit volume, sir. This is audible control. Hello? Yeah, yes, sir. Is it audible now? Volume is out slightly. Yeah, yes, sir. It's audible now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I was just talking about uh, starting the small micro level uh, processing unit. So, this is one example one can really start investing hardly one, one lakh maximum. So, like that, this will be really of a very good use. An association like a big industries and other things, only the group of the farmers they can do it themselves in the village level. And then others uh, technologies like the low cost dryers, in fact, these are solid dryers and washing dryers. This will also be very useful because they are very low cost, hardly 20,000, 15,000 only. And uh, this will be a versatile kind of a dryer in the sense. You can go for the drying with ginger, turmeric, any kind of a fruits, any, I mean, and then chilies, other than any time of, of a very versatile kind of. So another thing, another dryer uh, I would like to share with you is this particular dryer works on uh, the uh, on biomass dryer, actually. So what is happening in this is, so uh, in the villages, you know, uh, where the electricity is not available, and then it is not regularly available, you should think. And then uh, a lot of biomass is available because in a forest area, and the wood cutting, and then uh, uh, what do you call other agricultural waste material, they can be burned in that furnace. The same heat will be passed on a different channel, and then the heat will be used for the drying of this material. So like uh, whatever flu, hot air will not come in contact with the material kept in between. So this type of a dryer is of a very um, useful, and especially in the, uh, what do you call it, rural areas, hilly areas where electricity is not available, and then sunshine hours for the uh, sunshine hours is also less, where the water solar dryers may not be of a very useful use. So in those situations, such a dryer is of a very good use. So, so in that same dryer can be used for the drying of turmeric slices and then thin chilies, even a fish could also be dried in this. So this takes a hardly uh, 14 hours, 12 to 14 hours, especially this uh, turmeric and then the thin chili, etc. And the fish, it requires hardly five, six hours because in initial we have to give more heat. So like this is, first of all, technologies are only the available, you know. Then afterwards, we go for the packaging because the small bands, continuous band sealing machines will do. So in nutshell, with the investment of hardly one lakh, so one can become an entrepreneur. We can start an entrepreneur with a micro level. So this is one area one can think about. Then coming to the pineapple processing, because we are aiming, because the pineapple is also another unique crop in the northern state. In fact, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, pineapple is another big area of uh, issues here because the transportation of the pineapple from the field and to uh, what they call it, the marketplace and other place, it's a big issue. During the transportation, a lot of wastes are there actually. So what I was just showing here. No? So what happened during the transportation, our uh, uh, the pineapple the fruit are crushed or the bruised and uh, if you keep it for another two three days it cannot reprocess so for that transportation has to be improved has to be done through the corrugated uh, paper towel. then coming to another technology in the field of the pineapple uh, processing is you know harvesting of the pineapple in the pineapple field is again it's a very tough job and working in between pineapple rows, 
it's uh, really a tough job. So harvesting is uh, another a big issue. So we have a mission. We have developed a mission like how we can harvest the pineapple from the field without going so close to the pineapple, without touching the pineapple at all. So these particular uh, machines will cut the pineapple and it can pick up from that uh, place. After pineapple is harvesting, because we have already solved the problem of the pineapple cutting from the field, then we have small, small machines, say, for example, the peeling, coring, cuttings can be done simultaneously in a one stop. So this type of small, small machines, you know, costing up to 2,000 times there. So in the village level, when the pineapples are not transported, cannot be transported. So what happened, a group of people, say maybe around four or five people, so these people, they themselves can make it one in a big room. They have a one or two units of this kind. They will cut. During the cutting, peeling will be done, coring will be done. And then later on, directly we can go for the juice extraction. We will put it in the juice extraction. So this type of units will also be very useful uh, for a person who is really starting. Then another small, small tools like this. So what we call is peeling, come coding, uh, this one ring kind of thing. So this particular small, small hand tool, you know, can convert the whole pineapple into rings. So to this, the rings can be used either for canning purpose and uh, other, uh, this could be used for the, uh, what we call it, uh, a small dehydrated. So say in an hour, in an hour, near about 50 to 60 pineapples could, could be easily in a process within, with using this. Later on, that ring which I have made with that tool, you know, if you have a small dryer of this kind, we can directly go for osmo dehydrated ring and a seed ring. So this way, you know, uh, fresh pineapple, as you know, uh, you can keep it for a long, long time. At least one day, even one day, two days also, so, I mean, it is quite perishable. So once you convert it into osmo dehydrated product, you can keep this six seven months without any problem. So two I mean, just to cite one example, one pineapple you can make around about four to five rings of this kind, and then pack it nicely after osmo dehydrating. And then pineapple will cost maximum to twenty rupees over here. Okay, so if you after packing it will go to fifty rupees, then definitely thirty rupees. Okay, plus here and there twenty rupees profit you can earn from by this. This is the one area uh, one can become in this one. And then other value added products from the pineapple, like candy, jelly, jam, etc., etc. we can make this. So we have all the protocols with this. Then another pineapple uh, uh, RTS. In fact, what are the juice available in a market? You know? They are here and there. Uh, what they people use preservatives just to extend the same life for preserving, preserving it for months later. So we have the technology. So this juice with uh, RTS, you know, without adding any preservative, and then uh, we can store it three, four to five months without any problem. And then here, the technology we are using is we are going for the sterilization, killing all the microorganisms. And then apart from that, when we prepare uh, this RTS, you know, we blend with the ginger cinnamon because drinking on a pineapple pure, sometimes people uh, get fed up. Oh, what a taste pineapple. So like sometimes when we blend with the ginger flavor or cinnamon flavor, some flavor, ginger flavor, that will, you know, we'll have to keep on planning the taste of the people. So this is one strategy how the market uh, can be successful. So in this way, we have uh, uh, motivated one entrepreneur. This is a small family. So, so we have trained them. And then they started with the investment of 15,000, 20,000. They started with uh, the uh, production of the squash RTS with a small machine like this. So this is one of the motivating the slides actually we have shown. Then, other than all those issues that I have talked about, small, small machines, our university has again 
the college has got again another uh, uh, pineapple mobile pineapple processing van the importance of this pineapple processing van is the farmers will be producing the pineapple at their village level so transportation sometimes they find a lot of problem in the transporting the uh, their produce and then another thing during the transportation with the improper method of transportation there are a lot of crushing there are a lot of bushing on the fruits so in those situation we give such type of mobile processing van on hire so only one little one call to our you know, university to college so this such type of pineapple uh, van will go to the village they will be collecting around about more than 1000 or in a, in a day near about 2000 pineapples to be processed so what happened this has got all the uh, machines installed like peeling coring then slicing then juicing and then uh, hydraulic press etc three four machines are installed in this such a pineapple van so so like that it, per hour actually we are serving 100 rupees and then we'll just process all the pineapple whatever they have collected per how much amount of pineapple we can extract in a part of our then accordingly we said hardly 100 rupees they will take away uh, the juice and then this particular juice again they can go for uh, squash making or the artist making whatever they want so this is one uh, facilities we have so like that we go to the farmers field this is the machinery part then another uh, facilities what we have is so some people they say that suddenly we are not in a position to sell the juice which we have extracted or rather they have extracted some juice in a uh, vast amount a uh, huge quantity then we have the facility to convert the fresh juice into the powder form so this particular plan we need we have uh, converting we can convert near about 100 liters of uh, uh, fresh juice in eight hours we get around 50 kg we got a 10 percent recovery is there and it will have a same aroma you know final product like a powder we are getting no? so this could be used to shake one spoon of uh, uh, the powder mixed with the water and a drink like that so it can be stored for a long period and it can be transported definitely it will have a lot of values value is added so we have such a lot of facility So this is the factory, and we have, and uh, this is the process protocol. First of all, actually, one important thing to be here is we are extracting the aroma first. When whole juice is converted into powder, we inject the aroma so that the final product, what we get, no, will be uh, having the, the the natural aroma. So in that line, why not we can think about having a mobile. Tomato processing plant. But at the south, I specifically, you know, they have already started this. You know, because I, as I told in the beginning, a lot of tomato were wasted because there was no buyer. I know farmers; they didn't know how to convert. I mean, uh, how to do, how to do the processing. Now, if such type of facilities are available, you know, by the government level or some other uh, NGOs, they can directly go to the farmers field. Do the processing, convert it in, can be kept for longer period. So this is one issue where the you know the entrepreneurs is really required. Then another uh, benches one can go is when the pineapple is harvested in the field. All these pineapple big big leaves, you know, they are left in the field. They burn or they are just summer make it vermi compost or whatever. But now this is another very important. Uh, what they call byproduct, uh, what they call wastes, you can say. From this, you can convert it into hybrids, very good hybrids you can make out of this. In an international market, definitely you will have fast and lots of rupees growth. So, Norwegian states, we have this material. The rest of the things, you know, this is only the thinking that we have to make. So, this way we can uh, plan for our entrepreneurship also. Another areas one can go ahead is see in the pineapple processing uh, industries, you know, they have such type of a lot of wastes, you know, like from the crown, peel, core, etc. 
these investors can be trust with the small small business. And then practice in the uh, first type of uh, uh, what they call the ear type packs. And they leave it for weeks, one week or 10 days. Go for partial fermentation. During this uh, partial fermentation, you know, a lot of uh, reactions is taking place and then it becomes very protein rich. And, then, and then this could be at the best use for the cattle feeds. Like you know, in the Nordic states, so we have um, and, uh, uh, animal, we can feed to the animal, even to the pig bees, to the feed. So this is another area, instead of wasting and throwing in the field, no, we can convert it into animal feed. So this way, the pig bees and the very protein rich pig feeds could be made. And then another issue we found Basically, I found uh, this mini oil press machine. This, during the lockdown period, I know, I have already popularized near about three to four numbers of this uh, mini oil press. What happened when the big tech oil mills are closed during the lockdown? You know, this small, uh, what do you call it, oil mill machine. So we can directly process, extract our uh, mustard seeds. Because most of the villages, they have a small backyard, uh, what do you call it, garden or a small field. They are, they are producing near about 15 kg or 20 kg, 25 kg, and almost 30 kg. So when they carry this 20 kg of uh, mustard seed to the uh, oil mill machines, so they will accept, or you bring in top of turn. So in those situations, you know, first type of small machines will work because we are targeting a small villagers now. Villagers and a group of people in the village level. So these machines, you can extract two to four liters per hour. And then this oil, whatever we extract, you know, it's a totally very pure one, no additive, nothing, it's a pure one. Directly you can use this oil uh, uh, for cooking purposes. Apart from that, we are getting, you know, uh, cake, oil cake. This oil cake can be again used for can be again used for some of the uh, machine diagrams and machine there can be used for uh, animal feed making because animal feed making you know this is again another uh, area where the small scale animal feed making pile of plants so like our uh, uh, maize is grown extensively in the most of the northern states even in hilly areas in the foothill areas, you know, maize is grown extensively. During the COVID system, you know, what we found is when the, all the, uh, what you call national highways closed, all the markets closed, we do not, you know, we had a very big problem of animal feeds, especially poultry and, and cattle, etc. So with this small setup, costing around about three to four lakhs, we have a selling machine, we get a cops here, and we'll make a powder from this machine, then finally we get a powder and then mix with uh, the powder of uh, uh, what you call the maize powder along with the oil cake and then we'll put uh, some maybe vitamin something some supplement then finally we come up with pellets so this pellet which comes out of this one it is what animal feed pellet so like that by investing three to four lakhs at the different different spots we can start this small scale animal food making. Why do you depend on uh, all these animal food from the outside the state? So this is one area. And then another factors, actually we have promoted in many parts of the state also, the zero energy fuel chamber. See what happened for uh, when the many of the crops, you know, they can be harvested and only for a few cases, farmers, they cannot take it to the market initially. So like uh, uh, many crops can be harvested and stored it maybe one week and then can be taken to the market. So this is one zero it is full chamber. So how to design it, okay, this is another area. And not since that's bamboo shoot is one of a very delicious food. Very delicious food, people are taking fermented bamboo and then uh, others shredded bamboo, pickles, etc. So bamboo shoot peeling is another big issue. I know but in order to peel this bamboo, sometime, you know, one uh, 
uh, it is usually peeled with a knife and with the finger. Sometimes, you know, it's very difficult, really. So with this machine, which we have developed, you can peel off the bamboo shoot very easily. And let's say, first of all, big size bamboo shoot, you know, one minute, you can peel it off. And finally, we get this. And then later on, we can go for a slicing and then even slices. And then like that, first of all, machines, interaction of first of all, machine in the village side, where bamboo shoot, uh, what you call fermentations, threading, and this kind of stuff. I've taken you know, peeling is cost now. So like the one farmer, they were very happy to use this uh, uh, bamboo shoot peeler. Another uh, options, opportunities we can give is this, uh, we can generate the income generations for the Makana. Makana is what we call in Manipur Tangji. So in Manipur, actually, we are eating only the the membrane that is a real part of this. And the rest of the things, this nut, which is so important, which is very rich in all other minerals, you know, we are throwing out, we are not consuming. So now, now what I suggest is from this uh, nut, if we convert it into poking with, by using this uh, poking machine, you know, so definitely we can earn a lot of money. So just to give you one example, some of the things I have mentioned. So ma Makana, in fact, when Tangji, it has around about 30 to 40 sticks. Okay. And then usually it costs around about 15 rupees to 20 rupees. After poking, it goes up to 60, 70 to 80 rupees for the same amount of Makana seed. So this way, one can think about uh, uh, income generations through Makana shopping. And then other crops which we have is in Manipur, in fact, uh, mango. Uh, mango varieties available in Manipur, they are very short actually. It is very suitable for making pizzas. So in this way also, one can think about becoming an entrepreneur by making uh, what we call this pickle itself. This is another entrepreneur opportunity. And I have told in the beginnings, we have a very good lemon, a Thai lemon, we can make a pickles out of this. And then another crop that is uh, jackfruit, you know. This particular jackfruit in Manipur is underutilized crop till now. So this underutilized crop, uh, jackfruit, can be converted many other. And so this is one ladder that is uh, 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 jackfruit ladder. We can make, it's just like a jelly type of it. So this like that, we have a different different crop which I have listed in the beginning. By selecting few crops, one after another, which season, this uh, uh, initial four months, this crop, next four months, another crop. So depending upon this, we have to make a plan and then develop ourselves as a successful enterprise. So this is another mill. Okay. So now in uh, Manipur, in fact, uh, Black sake type, we call it the house. This is another uh, people are talking about, and then the people are uh, actually exported is sending. When a situation like a lockdown system, there's no transport and we cannot transport it, sell it to outside. So we converted into the house here. So this uh, we we have uh, actually developed two protocols. One is the house key, another is the house key. So what we did is. So we we'll hold the house, and we actually it is not the simply grinding the saho rice and making like this. Uh, there are certain procedures we have to go for the frying, then uh, dry it, make it a power, and then put all these ingredients required for making a uh, we call it this one cheer, you know. So afterwards it can be packed, and then whenever you want to eat cheer, because preparing the cheer uh, requires a daily practice. Anybody, uh, anybody, any, any time cannot be ready. So that's a practice. So, but if you want to convert this instant tea powder form, and whenever you want to eat, you put a few spoons and it mixed with the hot water, and you get better skin. But like, uh, because there's a big demand by the bodybuilders, especially this product. We have already, uh, actually not commercialized, but we have supplied already, and there's a big demand. And likewise, this is tea also. And then people talked about the endocyanins extractions from the 
black center tracks. Of course, we have the protocol. The only problem with the the how I mean, endocytin expression of the how we so, uh, the recovery, endocytin recovery from the black center tracks is subtly say 14 milligram from one kg of the black center tracks. So we, though we have, we will be investing a lot of machineries and then uh, in order to get only 14 milligrams. Of course, this could be used for other medicine purpose, other, other things. Otherwise, that's why people are not targeting much on this extraction of anthocyanin from Mr. Howe because the recovery level is so low. Okay, so we have to find some other method. So coming to the last slide, there is this different strategies what we can suggest is we have to popularize this storage uh, facility, zero energy pool chamber is one unit. And then we have to give a lot of uh, emphasis on the development of the small scale, okay, processing unit. There's a, at the village level, not uh, the big, big machineries do not work in a uh, state line in Manipur. And then uh, like a more processing startup should be uh, initiated, given an interest. And then lastly, mobile processing van because as i mentioned in the beginning say pineapple whenever pineapple growing areas we can send our uh, mobile processing van there and then when tomato is growing area then we can send our tomato processing van there so like that we must give emphasis on uh what you call establishment of such type of a small uh, mobile processing van then we can directly convert this to another so once a person becomes an entrepreneur, marketing issue. Even if it's not possible to transport or export our to the mainland area of India, our advantage is we are very close to the South Asian Indian country, other country. We can directly export our products to other country. This is the advantage we have, especially from North Asian states. So, so this way, this way, these are some of uh, uh, you know, small scale micro processing units through which one can become an enterprise. That's all I can share with you for today. Uh, fine, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, you know, it was uh, indeed really a wonderful presentation. Uh, you know, uh, audience, they might find some uh, difficulty in terms of uh, listening. I, I, I think maybe, sir, uh, your natural uh, Volume maximum level itself is this much, I hope. <laughs> or maybe, you know, some other issue with the headphone or mic what you're using. No issue, sir, but uh, it was audible. But if it would have been a uh, little high volume, it would have been much appreciable. No matter, sir, the content presented was uh, much appreciable. Uh, you know, especially on the post-arrest aspect, this is the need of the hour, especially in the Northeastern region. Uh, Post-arrest uh, loss alone accounts for near about 40% each. If all the suggestions are uh, are taken care of as suggested by our speaker, so probably we can try our level best to reduce the post harvest classes. So thank you so much once again, sir, for your nice presentation and um, for your kind concern uh, for immediately accepting our request also. Uh, now we have another speaker, uh, Mr. Dev Chandra. Uh, sir, 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 sorry for the interruption. Sir, uh, I think some other questions may also be there from the audience side. Uh, let me ask one, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, participants, could you please kindly interact with uh, Dr. Joy Kumar? He'll be very happy to clarify your doubts. Uh, kindly raise your hands or otherwise write your questions here. On your behalf, I would be able to get the things clarified. Participants? Uh, please kindly raise your hands. Anyone is there to ask some doubts? Yeah, fine. There is one question from uh, Danny. Sir, any idea on uh, plum entrepreneurship in the Northeastern region? Entrepreneurship on plum. Plum? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. 
So from the film, actually, even we have also done in our lab, we are preparing, uh, first of all, we are preparing jam out of that and the pickles. And then even we, what we do is plum, you know, uh, uh, we are drying the plums because after drying the plums, you know, and then uh, this could be stored for the longer period also. So for, at our laboratory levels, we have done, and it's successful, but uh, so far, uh, no interpreter has taken up. So in fact, uh, we were uh, thinking of uh, conducting some more training and the plums are, it is a season for the plum now. So uh, as such a protocols, different protocols, uh, of course, definitely one can contact me. We have the whole protocols to make a jam, we make a very dehydrated product like that. So uh, in these uh, sessions, explaining everything, whenever it was, we have a flow chart and all that. Yeah, that's right, sir. For more details, um, you know, I'll be sharing um, sir's uh, email ID. No if anybody is having uh, doubts, so you can definitely get it clarified. Uh, sir, there is another question from uh, Dodik. Are the machines developed at your institute, sir? I mean, are you developing any kind of uh, machineries at our uh, college level? Are yeah. they available for purchase? Yes, we are developing whatever machines uh, uh, I have shown. Uh, say like for uh, a ginger turmeric washer, dryer, different types of dry I have shown, and uh, some other uh, say uh, slicing and all those, and even a pineapple uh, machineries, a small small machineries I have shown. No, those are all the fabricated design developed in our college, in I mean uh, in in front college of agriculture, in, in the department of just engineering. So if anybody is interested, definitely they can write to me and we can make our. Well, sir, fine, sir. Uh, uh, he is also trying to know about uh, are they available for purchase? Yes, that's what I mean. They are available for purchase in a sense. Uh, you know, once you give it an Indian, then we'll have to fabricate. And uh, this. Oh, that's fine, sir. Fine, sir. Uh, Mr. Dodik, if you have any specific Indian, uh, you know, like what kind of uh, machineries you are interested to purchase, so then if you are specifically quoting that, we could be able to get the approximate price also for that. Of course, official formalities you need to follow later on. If you are really interested to purchase, if you want to figure out more specifically for your particular machinery, what actually you are looking for, but so you'd be happy to tell the approximate price. Fine. So this is another question from uh, Sahir. Sir, is it possible to grow black uh, centered rice in other parts of the country? Yeah. Black are, rice. Yeah, yeah. Black centered rice. That's yeah, what yeah. Uh, we have uh, all, all over India. Even uh, there's a black centered rice that are available in Orisha and other parts. Actually, maybe because of the soil conditions, difference in the soil conditions, the black centered rice, the same black centered paddy, which is grown at other parts, you know, but it doesn't have that kind of uh, uh, aroma or scent. But whereas the black centered rice, which is grown in, available in Manipur, uh, it has got the bad, the, the, what do you call it, aroma, smell. So uh, when you plant it other parts, it doesn't happen. I don't know why this is. Fine, sir. That's fine. A uh, few more questions also there. Um, can you explain um, once more how to set up evaporating cooling structures? This is the question from uh, Kim Nee. Okay. Zero energy cooling chamber. How to set up evaporating cooling structure? Okay. So the zero energy cooling chamber so, sir, sir, please don't mind. Uh, can you please uh, speak a little louder, sir? Okay. Again, uh, I, we are getting the message okay. that not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, fine. Uh, he's talking about a zero energy cool chamber. It is nothing but a evaporative cool chamber only. So, this uh, particular unit has to be uh, constructed at a, at a higher elevated area in the sense, uh, raised from where there should not be waterlogged area. And it should be constructed in a uh, what they call airy, very airy, you know, open area. Like it cannot be constructed inside the house or inside the shed. It has to be constructed in an open area. Of course, shed should be made, setting, because no rain should come inside. So this way, uh, even the construction is so simple. Here, you don't need even uh, what concrete, same cement and all those things. Simple, uh, this brickwork, that too, very low cost for half brand brick water will also be, uh, has to be used for basically. Only thing is that evaporation, cooling, evaporation and the process is going on in that. So the, actually I have shown in one of the slides, so, so that were the different steps, how to make a, uh, what do you call it, evaporative cool chamber. Fine, sir. 
this is the question from uh, Mr. Sunil Kumar. Uh, can you please kindly share the price of the machineries developed by AACRB CA Because I don't think so, sir may not be able to give the list of prices right now. Uh, Mr. Sunil Kumar, please kindly be in touch with uh, the speaker so that in later part, uh, uh, whatever specific uh, requirements you are having, sir would be able to figure out and sort out the, um, the purchase procedure for it. We have another question, sir, from Daffy on her behalf, let me ask. Uh, sir, my question is that, uh, is there any affordable and cheaper technology apart from zero energy pool chamber that farmers can uh, use to remove field, uh, field heat of perishables? Yeah, zero energy pool chamber, the same question. Uh, Excel actually is very cheap. No, no, e, 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 yeah. Oh, this itself is cheaper. Yeah, yeah very cheap. 12,000 rupees, you know, uh, in an area of, uh, say, one meter by uh, this one, uh, eight that 80 centimeters. So at the most one by one meters area and with the height of almost one meter. So uh, it will cost maximum 12,000 rupees. So it is uh, almost the cheap. Fine, sir. 12,000 is nothing these days. Yeah. And this is the question uh, from Mr. Sindil Kumar. Is it possible to do export through road to Myanmar and Thailand? Uh, yeah, that's what uh, actually it is. Uh, it requires government permission or something. So uh, uh, we cannot do it ourselves. But of course, this is going on because we have uh, India, uh, Myanmar, we have a border, More. All these uh, good exchange is taking place. Uh, so uh, that way, exchange of these goods can be taking place in this border. That's great, sir. I uh, you know you're kind enough to clarify all the doubts. Um, fine, sir. Uh, if, I think I, a few, only few things, as uh, Mr. Sunil Kumar was asking, and few others also, they were asking about uh, Dodik. So both of them, please uh, and share the email ID of sir. Uh, please kindly give your specific requirement. So based on that, sir, we'll work it out and uh, let you know the more details. Perfect. I'm very happy. Thank you so much, sir, uh, once again, uh, for your uh, kind gesture and nice presentation. I, I, sir, it's my suggestion, sir. Please don't mind. I, I think you have to work on increasing your volume, if at all. <laughs> <laughs> now it's fine, sir. Now it's fine. Because sometimes what happens, sir, the speakers are from different parts. Uh, you know, as we are experiencing poor connectivity in the northeastern region, yeah, yeah, yeah. few others, uh, some of the participants are there from uh, Ladakh. Mm -hmm. uh, they may experience still uh, weaker connectivity. For them, it may be very difficult to understand uh, what the speaker is talking about. I understand. Thank you so much, sir. It was a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much once again, sir. Thank you very much. Now I request uh, Mr. Dev Chandra. Uh, he is having, we are going to have another uh, lead lecture from Mr. Dev Chandra. For the brief introduction of uh, Mr. Dev Chandra, uh, may I request once again uh, Dr. Punavati. Madam, please. Dr. Punabadi? Yes, please. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me introduce our second speakers of today's webinar, uh, Mr. Nongkhambal Devachandra, student, student uh, welfare officer in charge of College of Horticulture and Forestry, Basigar. Uh, he is presently working as an assistant professor at College of Horticulture and Forestry. Uh, before he served as a marketing and recovery officer in SBI and also as a farm sector technical officer uh, in the field of horticulture in SBI local head office, Northeast Circle. Regarding his professional experience, he served as a FSPO in horticulture instrumental in the implementation of making Manipur government of uh, uh, making Manipur project of government of Manipur a flagship credit link program, Megalia Coconut Area, area Specific Processing of Seed Rubbers. He also contributed with SDC Nabat and Crop. Uh, insurance companies for releasing subsidy schemes and crop insurance for best implementation. 
He shares ideas in areas of development tools for financing digital uh, net processing in Barak Valley, growing grass cultivation or maintenance in Gaiga Hills, passion fruit cultivation or Nagaland, small tree growers in Arunachal, maintenance or expansion of orange cultivation, Jampui Tripura. He has completed uh, one, in one external funded project as a co PI and has 16 publications. So now I would like to request you to kindly extend the knowledge to the participants. Thank you, sir. A very good morning to everyone present in this webinar. First of all, I extend my gratitude to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir uh, Morangtin Pranjit Singh, and respected BI, Sir Basanta Singh, and our own teacher, Registrar, Dr. Professor K. Mamosa Singh, and all the learned and the experienced CISIAN professionals who are here with us in this webinar. And overall, my focus will be to those agri-printers who have been and who are in the line of entering this world of agribusiness. The first slide I'm focusing on the B, comparing to the new generation agri-printers. Uh, I appeal to them to be just like a bee who are busy in their activities. In the meantime, service the entire human society. So with this, I start my presentations. See, as we know that Chita is regarded as the fastest animal on earth, let us take an assumption that there are 100 Chitas kept for race, and every one of you will agree with me when I say that all the 100 will not be the winner. So here comes the challenge for you as an agri professional who yourself are very energetic professionals. So my appeal to you will be endeavor, struggle for best among the equals. This is a challenge for us that agriculture had been projected and people had the perception that they are always linked with war and poverty. But it is true that the, the primary sector in our Indian economy consists of the farming community, which are the weakest stakeholder in the whole chain. However, we will agree when I say that Agriculture has taken its leaps and bounds, starting from the manipulation in the food safe to the frozen food industry to the application of the artificial intelligence in the today's agriculture, horticulture, and allied sectors. But still, the impression remains. It is you and me to change these perceptions for all. On the other hand, the secondary sector in the economy, which is the industry, had been projected in a very different way. They never project the manufacturing part or the phase in which the elements and minerals have been extracted just to make a mobile or the automobile industry. So the two things, the industrial sector and agriculture sector had been perceived and projected differently. So it is time for you and me to have a different outlook on this aspect. When we say about the agribusiness, it is any farming activities which is accepted in the law of land in that particular area and has to do something with the zamin, zanwar, zal, or jungle to be very precise, where lending can also happen. That the soil or land based activity, animal husbandry and ally, anything to do with the water, that is the fishery sector, and also with the forestry and forest products which is acceptable in that way. When we say about the agribusiness, I as an agri-professional do not want to agree doing trading of the produce that comes from the other part of the world where our own farmers are producing the same thing. As for example, 
California almonds, that is being advertised now and then, but the local almond that is more nutritious, that is grown in a genuine Kashmir and nearby areas have not been highlighted. So this is a concern for you and me. Okay. I can change that from there. Sorry for the interruption, please wait for a few seconds. No, there was some noise there. I think uh, this looks clear. So I'm not able to change the slide. No, no, if you say that next. Okay. No, no, we will change the Okay. So in the animal husbandry and the dairy, or you can say veterinary sector, we have seen the lift and bound that the Amul industry has taken place from the cooperative society level up to the multinational companies' status. Now they are having the processing industry, processing unit, as well as the retail outlet in other parts of the world, say United States, as well as the few of the European nations. And if you say, uh, next please. Next please. See, veterinary and animal husbandry consists of the botry, piggery, duckery, and others. But the emerging trend of the hi-fi lifestyle is about the pet-loving individuals who are residing mainly in the apartments and metros. This also provides us a very good scope for every allied enterprise. We cannot forget about the leather industry that is coming up as an allied sector. I'm very happy to share with you that one entrepreneur was there approaching me once that he was doing leather business collecting the animal hood and skin from some villages in Assam and supplying to the Khadim and the Bata industry there. And those leather come back to the Northeastern region as shoes, bags, belt, etc. His enterprise should be acknowledged as a business venture. Next, please. When we say about a fishery or the water-based farming activities, fish rearing and production is one hand. Otherwise, the upcoming enterprise in today's world is about the aquarium industry, where the ornamental fish and the allied accessories, in addition to the fabrication itself is a big business. In metros and in some of the establishment offices and institutions, we have seen that fishery graduates are earning few thousands of rupees per month just to maintain and manage the aquarium. And on the other hand, the pearl production is a booming business continued to be in Hyderabad and even in the some part of the Orissa. Next, please. The Menes Institute in Hyderabad has come up with a broad components of the agri-food supply chain com consisting of the pre-production production, post-production, and till to the consumptions. You as an agri-entrepreneur who are coming in this business need to think about where you are good at. You can be the component itself, or you can be the one who just assist any of the component and earn handsome amount of income. Next, please. See, there are two groups of stakeholders. One is a conventional stakeholders that is doing anything and something about the agri allied activities. The stakeholder on the left side having the green background are called the enablers. They are doing and they will be doing anything and something for the agri allied activities. I, as an agri professional, belong to this cadre of stakeholders. We are doing and we will be doing. But the components of the stakeholders with a blue background are the one where you as an agri entrepreneur can intervene. You as a stakeholder or somebody that assists 
somewhere around in this stakeholder and do every business, starting from setting up of the agri clinic to the retailers or to even become the exporters. Next, please. And another group of stakeholders is unconventional. Why unconventional? Because agri and allied sector is not their core or focused area. They may exist or they will exist without doing anything to do with the agri allied sectors, just like bank, just tourism industry or e-commerce or apps. I'm very happy that in the recent time, there are many engineers, especially the software engineers that are coming up with developing of apps and helping the agri entrepreneurs in a larger extent. Next, please. These are a few of the selected mistakes and the myths that the agri entrepreneur used to have because of their exposure. Say, agri allied sector is the only one that is affected by rain or a season. When anybody is doing anything with the agri allied activities, they presume that they are doing some favor to the farming community. They feel that governments, line departments, and agriculture institutions do not extend help. Banks and financial institutions do not show any interest in financing. Agriculture is something that one come one and come all venture. That means anyone can do anytime, anywhere. Some people feel that I can do it all alone without taking help and suggestions. They also feel that to have the business growth, honesty has no role in that. I have to do something as small as adulterations, which is not acceptable. Yeah. The last one among many is that many of the elders and the parents used to have the advice that agree business cannot be a permanent venture. I repeat again, these are all myths and mistakes that every printer used to conceive in a very early stage. Next, please. As an example to show you that it is not only the primary sector or agriculture that is affected by rain. All the other businesses, starting from the hospital or the cement industry, even to the petroleum industry, they are all affected by rain. You will agree with me when I say this. Interact with some of the entrepreneur or the businessmen who are dealing with others and they will share you the bitter truth. Let us take an example of the umbrella industry, which was thought to be a business of only three months a year. Next, please. When we think about the umbrella, it is the Charlie Chappell umbrella that we used to think of, the black long umbrella, which is associated with the elders only. But umbrella industry has to survive. They need to do business from January 1 to December 31st. Then what they have to do, they need to evolve and they have evolved. Even though I don't endorse few of the companies, I would like to mention about Mahendra that who had, that had evolved itself to sustain the business. Now we have ranges of variants of umbrella starting from seeds in size, especially targeting the ladies and the children. Now they have showroom of the umbrella opening from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. This is called evolutions that needs to be there in business. Otherwise, you will not be there. Next, please. Let us remember, recall one of the very famous curve in the business or adoption or acceptance. Professor Everett Rosa was the one who introduced the early adopters or the pioneers. The concept says in every population, there are only 2.5% who are innovators, who are always creative in nature, that come up with some new ideas now and then. Those ideas are accepted by the first 13.5%. These are called early adopters. How can we derive something that can benefit the agri -printers? Let us see in the next slide. If we derive the Rosa's curve into pi diagram, let us imagine that out of every hundred mass or the people that you communicate your ideas, it is only 2.5, taking 13.5, 16% will say yes to your ideas. They will buy your ideas, they will listen to your creativity, they are ready to invest. Don't waste your resources and time convincing the laggards, the last 16%, the late majority or the early majority. So it is your ambitions and endeavor to target the first and the second. That means if you target 100, you will have 16. If you target 10 lakh, you will have 1.6 lakh. 
individuals or clients. So this is where you can do your business. If there is no one in your village that listen to your creativity, go to the next village. If not, go to the next village or town. So this is how the agripreneur will sustain in its own new business. Next, please. Yes, many of the speakers have already highlighted in the previous six days that agripreneur's sustainability percentage is very low. Everyone agrees this one and we are experiencing the same thing only. To be precise, only two to 10% of the agri business entrepreneurs sustain. The generation may last for one year, two year, or even three years, the second generations and so on and so forth. Let me dissect this sustainability or endurance in the next slide. If we see the endurance or the sustainability of the agripreneur, those who are successful or those who have gone beyond second generations are the one who have been struggling sincerely and seriously from the beginning itself. It is not them who are leaving the agribusiness activities. So my question and appeal to you, the young entrepreneurs, the new generation entrepreneur will be, whether you are in the red zone, yellow zone, or the green zone, even though there is a free flow of entrepreneurship or venture chains due to the situations that demands. Some of the entrepreneurs who are in the red zone had to be out of the track because, for example, one initiated an enterprise and who got job any sector, then he'd leave. So those are in the red zone. In this way, my question and appeal to the entrepreneur will be where you want to be, red, orange, or green. Next, please. We have been hearing about the SWOT analysis, but some of the improved versions of the SWOT analysis had been found to be SWOT those matrix analysis. That means the strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat, and re-looking those strength, re-studying about weakness, re-seeing about the opportunity and a the threat. Then we have to increase and strengthen the strength part magnify the opportunities, minimize the weakness, and face the threat. In any circumstances, the strength and the opportunity for the activity that you have perceived should always be more than the weakness and the threat. Next, please. Where do we stand? We means Northeastern state, to be very precise, in the map of the agripreneurs. Next, please. Yesterday, our respected DI Basantasar had already given the impressions as well as our honorable vice chancellor in his inaugural speech that Northeastern state is having uniqueness in every aspect, starting from the topographical and climatic requirement. The problems are unique. That is why the solutions, the technologies and the strategies need to be specific. Meghalaya that his Chirapunji and Mosin Ram is having the highest rainfall on the surface of the earth. This is something that each one of you need to think mm -hmm. differently, even though suggestions and the advice should be taken. The picture on the left-hand corner is about one stretch of a national highway. Can anyone believe that this is a national highway that is impacting the logistic support for three to four months in a year? And it means a lot to an entrepreneur. Next, please. We have a unique consumption habit. When I share this picture with the friends in South India, they cannot think of pomegranate having salt, green chili, along with the polo quesad. But this is a part of our summer food habit. By this, what I mean to say to you is that you need to be unique in your ideas of entrepreneurship. Next, please. Let me share one of the experience that the promoter of Thangsam Agro it was an entrepreneur in the beginning, agripreneur, but now this is coming up to the stage of agro industry. What you find is that he cannot purchase Mandarin that is found in the state as well as the nearby states in the region because it is expensive for him. Instead of that, if he manages to purchase from the Nagpur, Nagpur Mandarin, Punjab, Kinao Mandarin are cheaper for him getting even less than rupees 50 per liter, while he is getting more than rupees 60 per kg basis 
from a district that is adjacent to its own location of Imphal East. This is a challenge. He said, the volume of the citrus that is produced in the state and the price it is offering by the farmer is a very, very unfavorable for him as an agribringer. This particular situation is very, very disturbing to me as a horticulture professional. And we need to have answer for this. And this is an opportunity for young entrepreneurs in the state and the regions. Next, please. The mushrooming of the hotel, restaurant, and cafeteria in the region and other part of the world. They offer more than 60% of the edible items of the commodity from the agri allied sectors only, starting from the organic fruits and vegetables to the meat they offer. They are not the competitors of the agribusiness allied enterprises, but they are the enablers. Let them purchase. If I sell the same lemon in the market, it is very cheap, but if it is sell, sold in the restaurant, the farmer can fetch more price. So encourage them to have more number of horeca so that our farmer and the entrepreneur are getting more profit. Next, please. Banks and financial institutions, they have their own obligations to lend as per the rule of law, the constitutions of India and the government advisories. 40% of the existed net bank credit, to be simplified, the total loan that a bank extends, out of that 40% should be in the private sector lending, out of that 18% should be in agriculture. This agriculture will mean agri, direct and indirect. That means the cultivation and production part as well as the processing. So this is a scope. 18% of few thousand crore means a lot. All banks, including State Bank of India, all RRBs, I'm taking the state, are natural produce, all the rural banks or all the banks are bound to give private sector lending, including agriculture, except the foreign bank. There is some relaxation for them. Next, please. Insurance. This is one factor. My dear young entrepreneurs, please don't feel bad that if I see it, 50% of the new entrepreneurs do not care about taking life insurance of themselves. When a person himself is not insured, what can we think about the agribusiness or the enterprise that he will be undergoing? If something happens to him, who will take chance of that? So insurance of the persons, insurance of the activity is very, very important. In Northeastern state, Arunachal Pradesh, as well as the Nagaland are the two states that are still yet to have the crop insurance scheme in their respective state, even though their respective directorate of agriculture is working on that. As for example, if a farmer wants to do large scale cultivation of any crop in Arunachal Pradesh, do you think that the bankers or the financial institutions will be very comfortable when there is no insurance scheme? This is the question that you and me need to answer. Next, please. It is very fortunate to be in the Northeastern state that each of the Northeastern state governments are promoting every allied sector in one way or the other. So let us take advantage of this. Let them do it. We will take the advantage as a young entrepreneurs. Next, please. Do we have sustainable supply chain management of every allied commodities in Northeastern region? The answer is obviously no. Everyone will agree with this. This is an opportunity for you as an entrepreneur. You can intervene anywhere and be an effective part of the stakeholders and earn profit as an entrepreneur. You will agree with me when I say that all the stakeholders and the conditions conducive for having a sustainable supply chain management exist, but only we need to link the dots. Next, please. I, as a professional, want to advise to the young entrepreneurs how we can make you bankable, creditworthy, or preparedness in the coming days as an entrepreneur. Please don't expect sympathy from anybody from any institutions. It is your business. Insurance of the men and activities of your relationship. Please start small and escalate slowly because Rome was not built in a day. If you start talking in lakhs and crores, then people will listen to you, but will not be able to believe. Start with few thousands, go up to the lakh, go up to the crore. You need to target specific consumers. Don't target everybody. Please remember the 2.5% of Rose's curve and the pie diagram that we derive. Please do not show off what we are doing and how we are doing. Instead, 
consistently promote what you are producing and what you can process. Advertise them, promote them, let there be demand for that produce and the product and ideas and you earn. Please increase your focus on the transaction or the bank accounts. I will explain this. And please never take up as a part-time venture. If you are doing some part-time venture, those don't please don't show off because when you leave the part-time venture, many elders will have the advice to their kids that see, he had done, he had even done. So what you will be doing? So this is a very bad example for others. Please never compare your earning with a peer salary. Say my friend is so and so, and he's earning this much, then I'm earning this much. If you are entering in the agribusiness world, please never compare the salary of your peer along with your earnings. Next, please. There's a case study about the one small tea grower in Mangalore when the transaction in the bank accounts invite him to get sanction of loan, which is more than what he required and asked for. Once the, that particular STG, who is known to me and having close license with me till today, he approached the branch manager and asked for two lakh loan and he was declined. But the agriculture field officer was very confident that he was very genuine. We advised him to open current account and advised him to transact consistent. Transaction in banking term means you deposit the money, you withdraw the money. In business terms, whenever you purchase anything, you make payment through checks or through cards. And when somebody is purchasing anything in bulk, take check or transactions, not always in case. In this particular, the particular STG followed our advice and in eight months, his credit balance reached up to 24 lakh. Credit balance means the, the total amount of money that keeps on depositing irrespective of how much you withdraw. That means if I deposit one lakh in the morning, after two hours I withdraw it, in the afternoon I deposit again another that same one lakh and withdraw it. That means in that particular day, the credit balance will be two lakh. So you will not surprise for a small tea growers, in eight months it exceeds 20 lakh of rupees in transactions, which was very healthy business transactions. Ultimately this STG was all day in the branch and he was extended happily with a 10 lakh of agriculture cash credit. That's why increased transaction in the banks in whichever branch you want to have linkage in future. Next, please. Few case studies that banks are not interested in financing. Just to avoid that need, there's horticulture nursery in Dribugar, which got one crore in the nursery. You can imagine this, the passion fruit business or the project you have seen, the FPOs and FPCs and agri-clinic, agribusiness schemes. Except for Manipur and Assam, there had not been any agri-clinic, agribusiness scheme. When the question was raised in the parliament, the answer was not negative. At that point of time, there were none of the agriculture graduates who were unemployed in other states. That is why the situation was different. But now number of agri graduates that is coming up increases. That is why establishment of this unit need to be encouraged. There was one agri entrepreneur based at Guwahati whose loan was compromised. That means waived by the government. And he was happily availing that facility, 2.5 lakh. But after five years, he was having one project of 20 lakh and he approached the bank and the project need to be declined. Why? Because he was listed as a compromised loanee four years back who could not run the business for which his interest was paid by the bank from the government. That means he is a failure agri entrepreneur. That is why he cried saying that if I knew that 2.5 lakh will be very costly for me to check off a project of 20 lakh, I would have paid this. So this is a story. He cried, we couldn't help. Next, please. The one parameter I will discuss about the internal rate of return as an upcoming agribusiness. Many of the banks are offering fixed deposit at the rate of 8%. Any agriculture business project, the stipulation is IRR or the interest that we earn should be at least 15% in developing countries. What it means, if I invest 100 rupees in that agriculture project, I need to have 115 rupees at the end of 12 months. So if I earn 7 
percent or five percent better keep that money in the bank and earn a simply fixed deposit interest without doing anything to be very frank with you and honest in every agriculture projects if it is executed sincerely and seriously internal right of return is always more than 50 percent this is something very encouraging but please remember that two to five percent ten percent sustained agri entrepreneurs it is true for them not for those who were in the red zone or the orange zone Next, please. This is some mistake, I should say. In every allied projects, break even point, which is true in the industry, cannot be applied. And it is included by mistake in many of the agri projects, which the bankers understand that the person who prepares the agriculture project does not know about the agriculture. Why BEP? Break even point is the parameter that says how much product can be produced or manufactured compared to the capacity of that unit. But as you know, in every allied projects, I cannot presume that my cattle will produce this much liter of milk in this much period of time. So how can I expect BEP from every allied projects? So this is something that we need to know. You need to know as an entrepreneur so that you advise your charter accountant or consultant, so and, and so forth. Next, please. I would like to highlight one slide of basic guidelines or the bank norms, which will be accepted by the banker friends. That particular project should be prima facie. That means if they see, they should be ready to accept. This is called prima facie acceptability. The KYC should be very clean. The managerial competency, it should appear that he can do it. The technical feasibility part, the, all the sessions have been focusing on that. Social acceptability, whether that particular activity is acceptable in the society there by the rule of law in that particular regions. Economic and financial viability, environmental conditions. This particular is uh, saying about the pollution, which is not that very relevant in agriculture projects. And are there any government incentives and statutory obligations? So these are some basic norms and guidelines, which I want my young friends to know that. Next, please. Let me highlight one thing about a subsidy component. This is the mistake that many of the professionals, even in the line departments and some of the senior bankers, I should say, are not that very clear and about the young entrepreneurs. Let us take an example of project cost of 100 lakh. Assuming that 20% is subsidy, bank loan will be obviously 55, taking margin from the promoters as a 25%. In many of the cases, what happened in our region Northeastern state is that the promoter is having the impression that he need to take only the bank portion as a loan. That means 55 lakh. Without knowing that, the government will release a subsidy in later part of the project implementations. What is the problem? If he has capability to provide the 20% of the bank to the bank about the government subsidy, then the project will be successful. In many cases, they did not know this. So under normal circumstances, the bank loan should have been subsidy portion plus the bank loan portions. In this example, it should be 75 lakh, not 55 lakh, but a mistake happens. Few of the bankers, I'm sorry to say this, few of the bankers also have the intention to give only the bank loan portions of 55 without assessing the capability of the promoter of enabling to provide 20%. So ultimately the project will fail without having enough fund. However, as an entrepreneur, please, understand this very deeply and seriously that the subsidy portion is chargeable with the interest until the government release the fund and is received by the bank. The government may release on paper, but if the fund is not received by the bank, then interest will keep on charging on that portion also, which is very, very expensive. But you as an entrepreneur need to know this. I think this is very important as an entrepreneur Please try to understand this, and I will be happy to clarify in later sessions or through my email for the young entrepreneur who are in that green zone. Next, please. This is some, something that I would like to say. Two years back, Patanjali had to pay about 600 crore to the Uttarakhand government. Why? Because four years back, they have been claiming that the raw material that they use in the Patanjali product are the Zari Bhujia, collected from the jungles of so on and so forth. Just for claiming that one, the Uttarakhand government humbly approached the 
National Green Tribunal saying that Patanjali have been collecting the Zaributi from the bioresources of our state. We didn't say that, they are saying. So they need to pay loyalty. So after fighting through the court, Patanjali had to pay. What I mean to with this, if you have your own product and raw material, please never project that this is black scented rice. If black scented rice of Manipur without giving proper credit, then you are liable to be in trouble in terms of finance in later stage. Doremon, he is a very famous cartoon pictures. The Doremon pictures in some of the chips and the snacks, you will see that. But only Doremon, not with the whole team, is earning rupees five lakh per year. That particular company is paying rupees 50 lakh per annum to gold mine entertainment firm as a loyalty to allow using Doremon picture in that case. Please see the business, but that particular firm is earning because even though the price of the package is 10 rupees, the cost of production is less than three rupees. I'm sorry to disclose one of the small things, but I didn't mention about a company or the firm. Next, please. Let us, I would like to say to the young entrepreneurs to learn something from Progressive Pharma. This was shared by one of the Progressive Pharma felicitated in uh, national level award distribution ceremony that he is outstanding in his performance because he used to give the varieties that he grow free of cost to the friends who are cultivating nearby that one. By seeing this one, some of the friends got surprised why you are distributing your cultivar variety free of cost when you are doing expensive cultivations. Answer to that was that if my fellow friends are cultivating the same variety, my crops will be getting the best pollen grains free of cost from those fields where I will be harvesting the ovary that is the food grains. So I'm better when they're good, I'm best when they're better, and I'm outstanding when they're best. This is a secret. Please learn, my dear young entrepreneurs. Next, please. This is a question raised by pseudo journalist, I should say, who have not been exposed to the agriculture, but writing many things about agriculture. They are saying that agriculture and life activities are a burden. They are a no profit ventures, but you as agri allied entrepreneurs, please do not have this doubt. I as a professional feel that agri allied activities are and will always remain as a blessing, never a burden to the society and to the economy. Next please. Regarding the subsidy and grant, I want my young friends to understand that subsidy and grant are a sticking stick that we apply or we put to the young orchard or young trees that are weak in the initial stage. But if that particular walking stick is expected to be the walking stick, you understand yourself. This is the baby walker that enables a baby to learn walking faster earlier than peers. But if you expect the subsidy and grant to be the wheelchair, please understand yourself. With this slide, I want to say that be strong you may expect, you may avail the subsidy grant as a walking stick, not as a walking stick, but as a stacking stick, not as a wheelchair, but as a baby walker. Next, please. When we are expecting help, please don't end up getting harassment. If you need one luck, avail one luck. If you need one luck, and if you're expecting 10 luck, you will be dumped with those excess nine luck or any other things. So be very clear about getting help or which may turn out to be a harassment in future. Next, please. This is one of the questions that one entrepreneur raised six years back in one of the forum. If such ventures is said to be very, very profitable, then why you yourself have not done or why you have not engaged your young ones or your friends and brothers to do the business? My answer to them was that what a sword can do, a needle cannot do. What a needle can do, a sword cannot do. I regard myself to be in that green zone of the stakeholders who are enablers as an agri-professionals and you are in the blue zones. If you cannot decide where you want to be, then please don't have this doubt. If this doubt had been there among the industrialists and the businessmen, then we would not have seen any of the successful industrialists in today's time. 
So please be careful about these things, my dear young entrepreneurs. Next, please. I want to end up my presentations with a food of thought to the young entrepreneurs. When we advise the management of the problems of the farmers, we say that you spray NAA 5 persons, 200 ppm. I don't know how many farmers will be knowing about the ppms and the milligrams. And we know that many of the institutions and colleagues are not having all the time the scientific digital weighing machines also. Then how can we expect that that much milligram and microgram and the ppm can be measured by the farmers? So why can't we have, through you as an ed entrepreneur, that the inputs, it may be chemicals or plant regulators, formulated or packaged as a capsule, as a tablet, as ointment, or as a droppers. Please see the picture there. I don't know, 50 microgram, but it is having in terms of tablet. So if the chemicals are provided in terms of capsule and a tablet, then how far, how can we help our farmers in the long run? This is a the problem. They purchase in terms of litter, instead of wastage, they applied it, the in environmental issues come. So this is one of the food of thought for young entrepreneurs. Next, please. Here I'm concluding my presentations with a small four lines from the Robert Frost. The woods are lovely, dark and beef, but I have promises to give and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Thank you so much to the organizing committee of the webinar and also to all the young entrepreneurs who are listening to the webinar in the eastern part of the globe as well as to the western part of the globe. Thank you so much once again. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dev Chandra, for your nice presentation. Uh, maybe this presentation may be a, <clears throat> uh, inspiration for the um, newly entering agripreneurs. So if you have any other specific doubts, uh, could you please kindly raise your hands? <clears throat> Any doubts? No, no question. Yeah, Shankar Ganesh, I uh, want to ask some question. Shankar Ganesh? Yes, uh, yeah, please tell yes. Shankar Ganesh? Shankar Ganesh, are you here? Uh, one more from Sandeep. Sandeep? Sandeep, you are here. Sandeep, unmute from your side. <coughs> uh, fine, sir. If uh, if you have any other specific doubts, email ID also given. Anyone is there? Sandeep? Yes, yes, yes. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, please go Hello. Ahead. Yes, we keep asking. Uh, uh, sir, actually, uh, mistakenly the ha hand was raised, sir. Oh, okay. Hello. Okay. Thank, you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Any of you raised your hand, sir? Say something. If you want to appreciate, you please appreciate. Even if you want to have any critical comments, also we are happy. <laughs> Uh, fine, sir. Uh, thank you so much. There is no question. If somebody is having more specific question in the last slide, he has given his mobile number and uh, email ID also. Otherwise, we will be also facilitating you if you want to get in touch with Mr. Dev Sundar. So, thank you so much once again.
uh, you know, I hope that our organizing committee has uh, served better in all possible way for making you to really have a <coughs> enjoyable learning experience. Uh, my sincere request once again to all of you, please definitely kindly join in the well dictation session without fail. <laughs> Video. And uh, once again, my request, most of them, you are not keeping your video on, but at least for the valedictory session being the end of this webinar, kindly keep your video on and also audio audio will uh, mute, if at all required, we will unmute. Uh, my sincere request is that kindly maintain some decorum and ensure that uh, when your video is on, uh, you are not in a sleeping mode or, you know, say, uh, I can simply say that ensure that you are in a presentable mode. And uh, because uh, for the validity section, we, uh, validity session, we'll be having our vice chancellor, uh, many other dignitaries, invited speakers. Uh, so all will be joining. So we'll be more glad to have you all because uh, I know that uh, we have 500 uh, registered participants, but uh, most of the time we are not getting 500. But at least uh, this is a last chance for us to prove that all the 500 registered participants are on screen in Zoom. So that the program is will be a great uh, success. So I request once again without forgetting, but uh, being a valid decision, we all will be getting ready at 2.15 itself. So kindly join and ensure the network also. And if you have identified uh, participants will be giving their feedback. So hope they might have got ready. Uh, your presentation will be so crispy, only for about two to three minutes. Whatever you want to say, uh, you, you are having the liberty to share. Kindly prepare and ensure that your network is good enough. Fine. So once again, thank you so much. We all will be again assembling here at 2.15. You can start joining from 2.30 onwards. Thank you so much.